This episode was made possible by Cheddar and their new YouTube channel that makes videos covering business, technology, media, and news, but without the boring parts. Be sure to check out their video on what part of space NASA should explore next after this. About a year ago, I made a video speculating what NASA could do with the U.S. military budget. It's pretty amazing how much things have changed in that time, from a massive increase to military funding under President Trump, to the amazing achievements of SpaceX projects under the direction of Elon Musk. With that new information in mind, it's time to revisit our most popular video with a more specific goal. How quickly could we establish a fully functional, self-sufficient Mars colony with the current U.S. military budget? Before we begin, it's important to note that the numbers in this video, while largely based on the best estimates we currently have, are still wildly speculative, so take all of this with a grain of salt. We all know the US military is enormous. Many would say unnecessarily, absurdly enormous. Others believe it's important to ensure no one would dare challenge the United States, including those pesky allies. Whichever camp you fall into, the fact of the matter is that US military spending is greater than the next 10 countries combined. The official budget for 2018, which originally would have been capped at $549 billion per the Budget and Control Act, ended up a whopping $700 billion, not including the money spent defending the nation on the home front. That's a lot of money, 58% of the total discretionary budget. America spends more than half of its non-mandatory funding to ensure its military is the biggest it can possibly be. So what does this massive increase in funding get us? 10 more combat ships, Increased production of the F-35 and F-A-18 aircraft, a quote, modernizing of the nuclear triad to enhance deterrence, 20,300 more troops, and the creation of a so-called Space Corps, a new branch of the Air Force. Meanwhile, NASA gets just shy of $20 billion to fund not only its own ambitious projects, but also to help fund smaller enterprises. Pocket change compared to the military, but historically speaking, the space industry has been able to do amazing things with relatively little money. And more recently, with the successes of SpaceX and its reusable rockets, space travel is becoming more and more financially viable. In the past, rockets have been too damaged to reuse for future flights, and it can cost hundreds of millions of dollars to build new ones. By figuring out how to safely reuse their rockets, SpaceX has drastically reduced the upfront cost of sending cargo or humans into space. Back in 2016, when Musk first unveiled his plans for establishing a human colony on Mars, he estimated that it would cost $10 billion to get 12 astronauts to the Red Planet. However, he figured that if SpaceX could get 1 million people to go, it would reduce the ticket price to just $200,000 each. That's still a massively expensive undertaking, but keep in mind that price is for 1 million people. Okay, let's take a step back here. Before we look at cost, what would it take to establish a self-sufficient colony on Mars? Obviously, first you'd need a way to get humans there safely and efficiently. SpaceX has their Interplanetary Transit System concept and their BFR, a massive 30-foot-wide, 157-foot-tall vessel with room for 100 people in 40 cabins, as well as 8 stories of cargo space. That's not a bad start, but even paired with reusable rockets, at a rate of 100 passengers per launch, it would be hugely expensive to either have a fleet of these BFRs or shuttle just a handful of them back and forth on the 6-month round trip between Earth and Mars. Musk has mentioned his idea to build a so-called Mars Colonial Fleet, consisting of 1,000 ships to ferry new colonists to the Red Planet. Besides transportation, you need to have the infrastructure on Mars to house and support the arriving colonists and to refuel and launch the ships back towards Earth. Assuming the Martian infrastructure had to be completed before the first colonists could arrive, SpaceX, likely in cooperation with NASA and other international space programs, would have to build housing, transportation, food, water, and other resource production facilities, hospitals, schools, solar arrays, storage units, communication posts, and innumerable other necessities for a large number of people. Such an undertaking is incredibly expensive even on Earth. There have been a number of science and tech-centric cities built over the past several decades. But the most current example, and therefore the easiest to compare cost-wise, is Mazdar City in the United Arab Emirates. Mazdar is planned to house many fewer people than the proposed Martian colony, roughly 50,000 people versus 1 million, but its goal is largely similar. An emphasis on clean, renewable technology packed into a highly planned, specialized, and research and technology intensive hub. The estimated cost of developing the entire city is around $22 billion, and it's expected to be completed by 2030, a full 24 years after work began. Building a similar city on Mars to support 20 times the population of Mazdar will be exponentially more challenging and expensive. So, with those requirements in mind, let's crunch some numbers. Assuming SpaceX does decide to build the Mars Colonial Fleet of 1,000 ships, what would it cost? It's estimated that one BFR will cost around $185 million. 
times 1,000 for the full fleet, that's $185 billion, or about 26.5% of the annual US military budget. Estimates for actual flights of each BFR vary widely, but assuming a per-flight cost of $50 million, and assuming each vessel carried exactly 100 colonists every time, you get a cost of $500 billion, or 71.5% of the annual US military budget. So to construct a Mars colonial fleet and fly 1 million people to another planet, on paper, you're looking at 97% of what the US spends on the military every year. Of course, this doesn't take into account maintenance and repairs for each vessel, or additional makeup flights, or any number of unforeseen costs, which could quickly add up. Okay, what about the Martian infrastructure? Assuming a one-to-one -one cost to scale Mazdar City up to a million people and rebuild it on Mars, you're looking at roughly $440 billion. Of course, the cost of building on a different planet will be much, much higher than building on Earth, since you need to get the materials there or mine and fabricate them on site, then actually build an entire city in a difficult environment. At this point, we really don't know just how expensive space construction will be. A lot will depend on how much usable material we can extract from the Martian terrain, as shipping it from Earth will be incredibly expensive. Let's assume constructing the Martian colony would be 10 times more expensive than constructing it here on Earth. That gives us a ballpark $4.4 trillion figure, or roughly six years worth of the US military budget. So in an ideal situation, on paper, it looks like we could build a self-sustaining Martian colony for the cost of about seven years of the US military budget. Seven years. To get a million people living on another planet. Of course, that brings us to one point we haven't considered. Time. Planning, developing, building, traveling to and from Mars, all of these things take time. Even with all the money in the world, we couldn't hope to get a Martian colony up and running in less than a few decades. Elon Musk puts his estimate anywhere between 40 and 100 years until his colony is fully operational. So, while it may seem a little ridiculous that what could be humanity's greatest achievement could be fully funded with just seven years of military spending, or heck, you could just split the budget in half and still have the largest military in the world by far and fund the project in 14 years. While it may seem ridiculous, even if we did have the money to start today, it would take us a very long time until we could look up at the night sky and know there are a million human beings living on that distant speck of light. That being said, if we did start soon, there would likely be people alive today who would live to see humanity become a multiplanetary species. I think that's worth half the fighter jets per year. Space exploration is one of our favorite topics here on Second Thought, so we were more than happy to partner with Cheddar on this video. Cheddar recently launched their YouTube channel and are making videos that cover business, technology, media, and news, but without the boring parts. We just watched their video on what part of space NASA should explore next, and definitely recommend you check it out too. And if you like it, consider subscribing to their channel, which covers all sorts of interesting and fun topics, and watch more of their videos. After finally caving in to the many requests over the past year, I actually really enjoyed revisiting this topic. If there's another topic you'd like to see covered in an upcoming video, mention it in the comments below and I'll do my best to get to it. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing and clicking the bell to support the channel. And check out these playlists full of other great content. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.